I've become friends with school shooters. I've become friends with school shooters. So we just had the vice presidential debate. And um, yeah, they talked about guns a little bit. So what I'm going to do in this video is I'm going to debunk Tim Walz's response to these gun questions because there's a lot to unpack here. So let's jump into it. To the CBS News vice presidential debate, we want to turn now to America's gun violence epidemic. The leading cause of death for children and teens in America is by firearms. Senator Vance, you oppose most gun legislation that Democrats claim would curb gun violence. You oppose red flag gun laws and legislation to ban certain semi-automatic rifles, including AR-15s. So let me ask you, earlier this year, for the first time, the parents of a school shooter were convicted of involuntary manslaughter and sentenced to 10 years in prison. Do you think holding parents responsible could curb mass shootings? All right, let's start with this claim that gun violence is the leading cause of death for children and teens. This is a loaded stat that gets thrown around quite a bit. But here's the deal. What they don't tell you is that this stat lumps 18 and 19 year olds who are involved in gang violence, not exactly children in the way that you're imagining it. It is a convenient way to inflate the numbers to push a narrative. If we're talking about actual kids, young children, the leading cause of deaths are things like accidents, medical conditions, and other factors, not firearms. But they twist the stat to make it seem like school shootings are happening on every corner every single day. America doesn't have some overarching gun violence epidemic. We've got over 300 million people in this country and 400 million guns in this country, but the majority of gun deaths are self-deletions, not murders. Once you take out those, you're left with around 10 to 15,000 homicides every year. And most of those, a vast majority, are happening in inner cities through gang and drug violence, not in suburban schools or playgrounds. So no, there's not this massive epidemic of children getting gunned down on a regular. What we have are different issues that need real solutions like mental health care and addressing the root causes of urban violence instead of focusing on guns. Well, I think all the parents watching tonight, this is just your biggest nightmare. Look, I got a I got a 17 year old and uh, and he witnessed a shooting at a community center playing volleyball. Those Awful. things don't leave you as a member of Congress. I sat in my office surrounded by dozens of the Sandy Hook parents. And they were looking at my seven-year-old picture on the wall. Their seven-year-old were dead. And they were asking us to do something. And look, I'm a hunter. I own firearms. The vice president is. We understand that the Second Amendment is there. But our first responsibility is to our kids to figure this out. In Minnesota, we've enacted enhanced red flag laws, enhanced background checks. And we can start to get data. But here's the problem. If we really want to solve this, we've got folks that won't allow research to be even done on gun violence. And this idea that we should just live with it, and, I, and I, here's what I do think, that this is a good start to the conversation. I 100% believe that Senator Vance hates it when these kids, it, it, it's abhorrent and it breaks your heart. I, I agree with that. But it's, that's not far enough when we know there are things that worked. I've spent time in Finland and seen some Finnish schools. They don't have this happened, even though they have a high gun ownership rate in the country. There are reasonable things that we can do to make a difference. It's not infringing on your Second Amendment. And the idea to have some of these weapons out there, it just doesn't make any sense. Kamala Harris, as an attorney general, worked on this issue. She knows that it's there. No one's trying to scaremonger and say we're taking your guns. But I ask all of you out there, do you want your schools hardened to look like a fort? Is that, is that what we have to go when we know there's countries around the world that their children aren't practicing these types of drills? They're being kids. We owe it to them to get a fix. These are things that shouldn't be that difficult. You can still keep your firearms and we can make a difference. Anytime somebody leads with their hunter credentials to act like they support the Second Amendment, you know they are spewing nonsense. The Second Amendment isn't about hunting. It's about protecting your right to self-defense and preventing tyranny. So when someone tries to justify their stance on gun control by saying, I own guns, I hunt, just know they're either ignorant of what the Second Amendment is really about or they don't actually support it in its full capacity, which is the case here with Tim Owning a gun doesn't automatically make you a defender of the Second Amendment. 
First of all, you were the governor of Minnesota. You had no choice. That was the only way you were going to get into position. But you really didn't truly believe in the Second Amendment, which is why you spent 20 years teaching in China. But we're not even going to go down that road. But some people are fine with some guns, but will happily ban the ones that they don't like, that they think, well, I support guns, just not AR-15s. Well, the Second Amendment isn't, oh, you can support this or you can support that. Last I recall, it said shall not be in French. But you clearly don't seem to understand that that's not how rights work. The Second Amendment covers all firearms, handguns, rifles, you name it. Then there's the claim that infringing on rights will somehow solve gun violence. Spoiler alert, it won't. The Constitution protects our rights, period. And you can't strip someone's right just because they might commit a crime. That's not how due process works. Walls also talks about background checks like we don't have them. What he's pushing for is a universal background check, which would require a national gun registry to enforce. And guess what? Criminals aren't lining up for background checks because they get their guns from other criminals, not from law-abiding gun stores. Now let's tackle this whole you can't study gun violence myth. What Waltz is referring to is the Dickey Amendment, which stops federal funds from being used to push gun control through biased research. That doesn't mean you can't study gun violence. It just means you can't use taxpayer money to create anti-gun propaganda disguised as research. Did a whole video on this. And the idea that we shouldn't fortify schools because it makes them look like forts? Are you f***ing kidding me? So let me get this straight. You see, he didn't say we don't want to fortify schools because they don't work. He said, we don't want to fortify schools because we don't want them to look like forts. So you're more worried about the aesthetics of a school, which would prove to actually make a difference. But when it comes to actually infringing on constitutional rights, you're all willy nilly. Oh, we can infringe on constitutional rights, even though the thing that we're infringing on and proposing to infringe isn't going to actually make a difference. I want you to keep in mind, most school shootings are committed with handguns not AR-15s. So unless they're ready to admit they want to ban all guns, their argument doesn't hold water. In Finland, nice try, but schools in Israel look like forts and they're not having the same issues. The truth is, Waltz and his buddies know what works, but won't push it because it doesn't fit their narrative. Then there's the Kamala Harris bit. As attorney general, she tried to ban handguns in San Francisco. We've got the receipts. San Francisco voters passed what could become the nation's strictest gun ban, outlawing not only the sale of guns and ammunition within city limits, but requiring just about everyone who isn't a cop, security guard, or active military to surrender their handguns to police by April 1st. She's on record trying to ban guns and she supports mandatory buybacks. So when Wall says no one is trying to take your guns, just know he's lying. We've literally got her saying this on camera. You previously opposed an assault weapons ban, but it's only later in your political career did you change your position. Why? Yeah, I sat in that office with those Sandy Hook parents. I've become friends with school shooters. I've seen it. Look, the NRA, I was an NRA guy for a long time. They used to teach gun safety. I'm of an age where my shotgun was in my car so I could pheasant hunt after football practice. That's not where we live today. And several things I want to mention on this is talking about cities and where it's at, the number one where the most firearm deaths happen in Minnesota are rural suicides. And we have an epidemic of children getting guns and shooting themselves. And so we have, and we should look at all of the issues, making sure folks have health care and all that, but I want to be very careful. This idea of stigmatizing mental health, just because you have a mental health issue doesn't mean you're violent. And I think what we end up doing is we start looking for a scapegoat. Sometimes it just is the guns. It's just the guns, and, and there are things that you can do about it. But I do think that this is one, and I think this is a healthy conversation. I think there's a capacity to find solutions on this that work, protect Second Amendment, protect our children. That's our priority. Mm -hmm. Did Tim Walsh just say he became friends with school shooters? Now, I'm going to give him the benefit of the doubt here and assume he misspoke, but come on. That's one hell of a Freudian slip. You really can't walk that one back. And let's be honest, that slip says a lot about where your head is at. Who casually throws out a line like that during a debate? Imagine being at a dinner party with this guy. Oh, this is Tim. He's friends with school shooters. 
No big deal. If that's your idea of a social circle, Tim, I've got some serious questions for you. Maybe consult your other friends before making gun policy decisions. Now let's get back to the facts. Walt conveniently leaves out that the Sandy Hook shooter stole the guns from his parents. So someone explained to me how a universal background check would have prevented that. Spoiler alert, it wouldn't. And while they focus on banning so-called assault weapons, the majority of mass shootings are committed with handguns. So after they ban AR-15s, are they gonna come for the handguns next? Walt says times have changed, and that's exactly why we should strengthen the Second Amendment, not weaken it. Crime, mental health issues, and instability have all increased, and people need to protect themselves more than ever. His arguments work against him. He's trying to paint a picture where we need less freedom, but he's actually proving why we need to defend our rights even harder. Let's also touch on this whole self-deletion thing. Funny how anti-gun folk never mention it until the gun community forced them to acknowledge the stat that over 60% of gun deaths are self-deletions. Now they wanna act like they care about it, flipping the script to push their agenda, but here's the reality. Self-deletions is a mental health issue, not a gun issue. If guns were the problem, we'd be leading the world in self-deletions, but we're not. Countries with strict gun control laws have higher self-deletion rates. So clearly, it's not the guns, it's about mental health. And then there's the idea of stigmatizing mental health when it comes to gun ownership. That's a slippery slope. And then there's the idea of stigmatizing mental health when it comes to gun ownership. Well, that's a slippery slope. Just because someone has anxiety or depression doesn't mean they're violent or shouldn't own guns. The solution isn't to ban guns from anyone with a mental health condition, it's to fix the mental health system. But anti-gunners don't want real solutions, they want restrictions. Waltz even hints at it, it's just the guns. That's his entire solution, ban the guns and call it a day. But as you can see, when you dig deeper, you'll see their end goal is to ban all guns, not just the ones they don't like today. Waltz may sit up there and look like an old grandpa from Minnesota and try to fool you with this whole I'm a hunter bit and not support the Second Amendment, but we need reasonable bullshit. I know exactly who this guy is, and he ain't fooling me, he ain't fooling none of us in the gun community, but he's fooling a lot of you out there, and y'all don't know the facts, and I just laid them out there for you. So it's either you pay attention to this or have your rights stripped. I ain't got nothing to do with that. But for the people out there who are gonna go out there and vote, just make sure. When you go out there and vote, you have the proper attire on because it's not only election season, but it's hoodie season. And we all love hoodie season, right? So that's why I came out with the Keep America tactical design in our new premium embroidered hoodies that you can see here, just looking all soft and luscious. You see right now I'm wearing the Keep Texas tactical because you know I'm in the great state of Texas. I also have my Keep Texas tactical hat because I'm in the great state of Texas. And when I go vote, I'm gonna wear this to the voting booth, yep. Keep, keep Texas tactical and keep America tactical. Now, the beautiful thing is, I actually have these in all 50 states. So whatever state you live in, I have a version of it in this beautiful premium embroidered hoodie. And the same thing with this hat. So that when you go and you vote, people know you are voting to protect your constitutional rights, especially when it comes to the Second Amendment. So I'm gonna put a link in the description section of this video that you can click to get your Keep America Tactical state-specific design in this premium embroidered hoodie and this hat and drinkwear and in t-shirts. So hit the link, leave a comment in the comment section. Don't forget to like, share, and subscribe. And I'll see y'all later.